get to the, the uh, disease of the month, we, last year when we came, we talked about pandemic. We didn't know when it was coming, where it was coming, what disease it was, and guess what? It showed up. It showed up uh, as H1N1. Okay. What makes a pandemic? It's, a, it's an influenza virus that we've never been exposed to before. Humans have never been exposed to before. One of the things about influenza in general, every year we have seasonal flu. Everyone gets sick. How many of you get your flu shots? Oh, good. How many of you get their flu shots this year? Good. Influenza naturally spreads easily from person to person. Some years you get sicker than others because the influenza virus that is in humans can change a little bit. This current virus is new to humans, but it's a combination of, of parts of, of virus from pigs, birds, and humans. So it's kind of a recombination, if you want to call it that. Over 70 countries worldwide have reported having this new influenza virus. We're at WHO Phase 6, which the World Organization has uh, classified it as a spread worldwide. And in our local area response stage, it's it's spreading all over, so that's simple enough. What are the signs and symptoms of, of H1N1? Anybody got any guesses? Fever. Good cough. fever. Cough. Fatigue. 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 Very, almost exactly the same as regular seasonal flu. So you, how do you know which one you have? Okay. It, the treatment is the same for either one unless you have a significant health issue and that's something to discuss with your doctor. So without a specific test, we don't know if you have seasonal flu or a pandemic flu, but the treatment course isn't any different. So that's one thing to keep in mind, to not be as scared. The one thing we are seeing different about this virus is it's tending to affect a little bit young, younger people. Every year with seasonal flu, the regular flu that we see every year, about 36,000 people die in the United States. Uh, 4,500 of those are in California, approximately, every year. But it tends to be older people and people with um, other health, pre-existing health issues and very, very young babies. This one is affecting a little bit more school age. It's up, I, mean, I think the median age is up to like 40. So a little bit younger population. Older population seems to not be as affected by this. So this is something that is different about. The virulence um, is, is in how much disease or how sick does this virus make you. Right now, it's relatively mild to moderate. It's not any worse than seasonal flu right now. One of the concerns that public health is always watching is will it change? Because viruses can always change. What can you do to prevent or take care of your flu? Number one, the biggest one, cover your cough. Sneeze into your elbow. Wash your hands frequently. If you don't have soap and water, using the hand sanitizer, the gels that everybody has, you can carry that around. I know I keep sending one of those with my daughter to school, and she's been really good about actually using them. Um, if you think someone's sick and they're not being good about staying home, stay at least six feet away from them. It's something we call social distancing. Because this virus is expelled in the air, it can only go so far and it falls to the floor, and then it dies. Okay. If you get sick or feel like you have these symptoms, stay home, drink plenty of fluids, take a fever-reducing medication if you have a fever. If you have a cough or sore throat, you can take the over-the-counter medication to make yourself feel better. But stay hydrated and rest, that's the most important. You should call your doctor if you have other medical issues to see if the doctor wants to see you or not. Just don't go show up. Number one, they're gonna be very busy. And number two, if you didn't have the virus before you got there, you might get it when you're there because there will be other people there sick. If you are become very dehydrated, if you have shortness of breath, uh, difficulty breathing, you do wanna get medical care for that. But kinda of just, it's hard for all of us, especially up on the go, is take it easy and take care of yourself. It'll run its course in three to five days for most people. One of the differences is normally we see flu during the fall and winter months. Okay, so we're just getting ready to go into what we consider our normal influenza season. That's one thing this new virus did differently is it showed up back in March, April. I think we identified it in April. It was probably floating around a little bit before then. 
So pandemics don't always show up at the same time as regular flu seasons. With the regular seasonal flu, 5 to 20% of the pub public is uh, affected. Well, they will get sick. Because from previous years, some people have some immunity, and then hopefully the vaccine is a good match also. One of the differences with the novel or the pandemic, uh, H1N1, is none of us have been exposed to it before. So we have no, our body has no ability to fight it off initially. It has to build that up. With seasonal flu, the vac vaccine's available every year. It's available right now. So it's, it's out and ready because they started planning for it six, eight months ago. With the pandemic vaccine, it is in progress. Now, hopefully we will have it by the end of October, beginning of November. It, we should have at least some. And it will be probably in short supply initially. So there may be a different, what we call a target group. We're going to be looking at um, vaccinating children and pregnant women initially, but eventually it will be available for everybody. There will be enough. It just may be later in the season. Talk about this. Number one, it's a new virus. We're constantly watching to see what it's doing. You know, we were wondering if it was going to get any worse, any better. Were we going to see it again this fall, which obviously is showing up. We talk about waves. Our first big wave was April, May, where we saw a lot of cases. Then it, it never went away. I want to affirm everybody. It never went away. Our infectious disease department has been tracking cases as time goes on. But what we saw is a big spike where we saw a lot of cases and then it kind of waned off a little bit. And now we're starting to see cases again. And there's several reasons. We're going into regular flu season and it, school's back in session. Kids are, love to share germs. So it's, it's another time when that happens. Um, when we talk about the epidemiology of the virus, is it going to change? There was concerns. Is it going to get more, cause more sickness, affect more people? So far it's behaving itself. That's kind of when we're looking for shifts and drifts. Is the virus going to change it all so that um, even though you were exposed to it before, you maybe not have as much immunity to it? The vaccinations, again, we kind of talked about that. That will be coming up. Watch for more information on the Public Health Department website. As it comes out, there will be a lot of news, I'm sure, advising who's going to be getting it and where it's going to be coming to. And then the other part of this, and you're doing this today, is education. Is you're finding out information about it. We're communicating. What can you do? Do you have a sniffle? You don't need to run to the doctor's office because we want to have the hospitals and the doctor's offices available to treat those that are most sick. If you could take care of yourself at home, again, this is kind of enabling you to, to, to take some control over what's going on and, and kind of go from there. Thank you. With the H1N1, they will categorize who is the most important to receive this vaccine. Everyone will get it, but they ignore it. The health department will decide who needs to be vaccinated first. Doesn't mean that everybody's you know, there's a big, huge long line about everyone being vaccinated at the same time. If you're thinking, oh well, I'm going to get it now since I'm not going to have the, the vaccine, that's not true. The vaccine is on the way. Just maintain your communication and help out. If someone else that you know panics, just let them know that the vaccine is coming. Just make sure that you uh, stay home if you get sick. Your immune system is your best defense. The best part you can, the best thing you can do is sleep, get enough sleep, six to eight hours a day, so let your body build up your immune system. If you're only sleeping two or three hours, then your body is not going to be uh, at its best, and you're going to get sick and your body's here.